guys happy october i literally love autumn and it's getting dark the festive autumnal cups are out we've got a candle on but i am worried about that candle because it's flickering and i don't want to cause like i don't know a seizure if someone's epileptic so i actually think i'm gonna blow it out because i'm stressing out it is really flickering it was there for the vibes but i don't want to cause any issue <laughs> but anywho i can't believe we're already in october it feels like this year's gone so quick i don't know if anyone else feels that way i just find this time so magical more cozy and i literally have been dying to catch up with you all with the last book series i read in september before we entered october and that is the folk of the air series by holly black i'm so glad i finally finally got my hands on it if you haven't seen the video i bought a romanticy mystery like box bundle from tiktok shop hoping to get this series and i didn't get it so this was going to be like a next year read for me but then people in the comment section just everyone hyping this book up i had to read it i had to i felt so left out and i wanted to see what the fuss was about jude and Carden. so i went and bought it and i'm so glad i did I was able to finish this series in five days and I read The Wicked King in 11 hours. I have never freaking done that with a book series before so that just shows how engrossed I was in the story. I loved it. That's not to say I loved everything about it. I definitely have some things I wasn't so keen on but that's the whole point of this video just to discuss my experience with this series and deep dive into some of my feelings because there are some things i need to know if people feel the same as me particularly about one character we will get to her soon <laughs> now just in case you haven't heard of this series let's quickly go over the plot of the first book and that is the cruel prince and this is a ya fantasy which follows a mortal girl called jude at the age of seven, her parents get murdered and then her twin sister, Taryn, and her older sister, Vivian, end up getting taken away to the realm of fairy. And she is brought up there by her parents' murderer, which in itself is savage. And I can't imagine the mental turmoil you would have with growing up with your parents' murderer and kind of having that Stockholm Syndrome situation where you fall for your captor in a way but that's kind of what happens with Jude and it jumps to when she's 17 so she's grown up in fairy and all she wants is to fit in she wants power she doesn't want to be afraid because mortals are looked down upon they are pretty hated and they are at a mess massive massive disadvantage compared to all the other creatures living in fairy and Jude just wants to make her mark and feel like she belongs there because she enjoys living in fairy like she doesn't want to go back to the mortal world so she's determined to pave her way in this world and i'll quickly read a bit of the blurb so it says mocked and tormented for being merely mortal jude soon realizes that to survive in the treacherous dangerous world of the royal court she needs to be cunning and deceitful as the fae themselves but the stairway to power is fraught with shadows and betrayal and looming over all of this is arrogant and charismatic prince Cardon. jude is a very determined power hungry girl who has to fight for everything she has got basically but whereas Cardon, he is the complete opposite he is a spiteful bratty prince character who seems like he can get whatever he wants but overall they couldn't be more different, Jude and Carden, and I liked their love-hate relationship because they really do hate each other and that hate turns to loathing because they end up hating themselves with the fact that they like each other. Then that loathing turns to lust and then those feelings get a bit more intense and I did really enjoy the build-up of 
their relationship throughout the series. It really is a slow burn enemies to lovers throughout the entire series. There's no spice in this book, but that doesn't mean to say there's not like intense situations. There's a lot of tension and build up and lust and flirting. And there are intimate scenes, but I would say they're like quite PG as it is a YA fantasy. <laughs> It follows themes of deception, scheming, betrayal, heavy on that freaking betrayal. <laughs> so frustrating, literally, I wanted to throw mainly these two books at the wall with the amount of betrayal Jude goes through. <laughs> and then there's royal politics, twists and turns. It has a bit of everything. Even found family, I feel like a little bit in The Cruel Prince, but quite a bit in The Wicked King. Now, if you're someone that likes magical systems and a lot of fairy creatures, I think you'll really enjoy this book because there's not just the typical fae that we get in a lot of these books, which just have the pointed ears, then they have different kinds of power. In this, they really do have so many different creatures. They all look unique. Even the creatures that they use as transport, Jude rides on like a massive toad. So like it's very magical and fairy vibes which i really enjoyed and i like that there was different magic for different people there were so many moments where my heart was racing throughout the series purely for my girl jude she stressed me the hell out and she goes through hell in every single book i'm telling you i've seen online that some people really didn't like jude they found her quite annoying and i can understand where they're coming from because she is a bit frustrating with the choices she makes but she is so strong. I freaking adore her. For me, she can do absolutely no wrong because most of the time she is thinking about other people, mainly her family. Like a lot of her actions are either for her safety or it's to protect one of her family members. That's not to say she doesn't get mixed up in the hunger for power and the, the sway of right and wrong, but I'm telling you, underlining everything, she is thinking about the bigger picture and she is thinking about her family. She really starts struggles with trust and she makes sure that she can look after herself. And I enjoyed reading her journey throughout the book of her learning to trust people and accepting her flaws in a way. And then Carden, I didn't love him as much as the fandom do. Like, The Cruel Prince, the first book, I hated this guy. Hated. Like, don't get me wrong, there were moments where I was like, mm, okay. But overall, I hated him. Then, in The Wicked King, I was torn. I didn't know what to think of him. I think that was the point of the book. There was a lot of things that he did that frustrated me. But yeah, I just was really torn about my opinions. So when I got to the end of this book, I was like, why do people love him? But then in The Queen of Nothing, I finally warmed to him. But I felt like I needed more of this book and more from Carden to make me absolutely die hard fall in love with him. I am more in love with him because of the fan art, like literally Pinterest. I am in love with the series 10 times more now, purely from the fan art of Jude and Carden and Carden and the quotes that people use and the book edits I've seen. They make the series live on. And yeah, I like Carden just so much more and I'm fangirling over him purely from the fan art. So yeah, I didn't love, love him in the series, but I hella love Jude. She is one of my favorite FMCs. Lastly, what I'll say about Carden is you really do get to know him throughout the books. He is that moody, cold, kind of playboy guy at the beginning of this series. But as you read on, you find out he's quite a layered, complex character. And you really do find out why he behaves and acts the way he does. So you are in for a treat when you read this series because if you haven't, it is fabulous. I rated The Cruel Prince 4 and then I absolutely love The Wicked King. I rated this a 4.25. Oh, I can't get over how much I love this book. 
so many twists and turns i didn't expect what was coming stuff that i found predictable in these two books was not the case in this mm. but then sadly the queen of nothing it was <laughs> the book dropped for me i didn't think it was as good as the first two and i rated it a 3.75 so still a good rating but i felt like the pacing the writing and just the overall how everything went about it just felt off and quite rushed which was a shame but it was still a great series so i hope you read it now i'm gonna go into spoilerville because i need to just dive into each of the books i'm gonna be going through my experience one two and three and just how i felt whilst reading them because i'm telling you now this gal went through every emotion <laughs> oh my god and i need to know if you felt the same as me so yeah if you haven't read the series spoilers coming i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you pick up this series let me know if you're contemplating reading the series but now for my folk of the air peeps let's debrief i'm just gonna get some more coffee <laughs> crazy and when they had that kiss i was like what then there was another moment where i thought maddock had done an arranged marriage between jude and dane but let's quickly get on to her family relationships i honest i hate i don't think i've ever hated a character so much the trust hasn't been built yet so he should have seen it coming and i will say that for every single book like i think there could have been better tension and build up to those intimate scenes what the flying hell is going on <laughs> I mean, come on. He missed the mark there. He he did wrong. Loved it. 